Welcome to the Sovereign Self-Resolutions Kept Summit, where we focus on that big sweaty palms goal and making 2020 the year that it happens for you. I'm your host, Sophia Renee Morales, and today we are talking with Chantel Girardi about standing out online amongst all the noise. Before we get started, though, I would like to invite you to really show up for yourself and truly get the most out of this discussion. Please put down your cell phone unless that's actually where you're watching this. Close all those browser tabs, put a little sign on the door and create a little bubble of focus for yourself. Get a pen and paper so you can write down your ahas and the things you wanna follow up afterwards so that you're taking the most away from this time that you can because it is so important that you actually achieve your big goal. I know frequently when we look at these things, especially if it's something really personal, oh, well, I'm just gonna drop that 15 pounds. We tend to get in this mindset where it's like, that only affects me. It, it has no effect on anybody else, whether I hit that or not. And it's not actually accurate because when you drop that 15 pounds or whatever your goal is, and you become more active, you become more engaged in your family life, in your business life, in your community life, and that ripples out. The fact that you're more present and more energetic makes a huge difference in the world, which is why I always encourage you to be selfish <laughs> about certain things so that you are at your best and most able to get out in the world and make a difference. You're so important. So while you're creating your bubble of tranquility, I will go ahead and introduce our guest for today. Our guest expert, Chantelle Girardi, has a diploma in social media marketing and is qualified and an award-winning Facebook strategist who empowers business owners with the skills and strategy to grow their business using Facebook. Facebook actually saved her business, and I'm talking about the free Facebook, not Facebook ads. She went from a broke business owner in a new country with three kids under five years old to now being abundant in business and using Facebook. She now empowers business owners worldwide who have no marketing budget to create an income-producing strategy using Facebook. Stand out, get found, generate and convert leads, create compelling content, sell your products or services, monetize your groups, run successful events or network, all using Facebook. She was nominated the top 100 coolest companies in Australia. Congratulations on that. <laughs> Empowered Mums Small Business Winner and finalist in the Telstra and Queensland Business Excellence Award, along with being featured on the Channel 9 News. Chantelle is passionate about helping business owners gain Facebook marketing skills to succeed in their business. Welcome, Chantelle. I'm so happy to have you with us. And I'm so glad that you calmed everyone down before this because I can be pretty full on because I get so excited about helping business owners. So, <laughs> so yeah, it, it's so nice when you can actually take a minute and take a deep breath and go, oh, yes, this is what I'm doing. This is what I'm really focusing on. I, I find it makes such a huge difference for me when I actually take that moment to breathe and really prepare for what's happening. <laughs> So I am so excited to have you with me because Facebook, I know for myself, and I'm pretty sure this goes for a lot of other small business owners, entrepreneurs, or even just people on a mission. Um, it can be a really kind of confusing place. And it seems like the rules are changing all the time. And one day you put something out on your, your business page or your group and everybody on earth sees it. And then the next day you put something out and it's like, it gets shown to two people, neither of whom care. <laughs> so I am thrilled to have you here so we can pick your brain. Um, and I kind of want to start with the big picture. How does one go about standing out online? Because there are record numbers of people now who are out there. Everybody and their brother has a website. Everybody, it seems like, is starting a Facebook group or a business page or something. How do you differentiate yourself from everything else that's out there? How do you grab eyes and attention? Sure. Well, I firstly would like to acknowledge that, yes, 100% what you said earlier on how people are completely overwhelmed with this new era of using Facebook in their business. And many see it as a stress. They see it as a time waster. 
um, and uh, it can really uh, upset people. Um, in fact, uh, a lot of people on the Gold Coast will remember a time where I was crying in my business because I was like, I couldn't get this right. I couldn't get it right. What do I do? Um, so I completely understand how people feel. Um, but when you understand the fundamentals of Facebook and you understand what Facebook was originally created for, those values don't change. It's kind of like when you, when you know your partner or you know your children, you know your dog, they might have a good day or bad day and they may change, but the values are very much the same. And Facebook is a platform about relationships. It's about sharing content and it's about a relationship sharing content and getting engagement. Mm -hmm. um, so once you focus on those three things and you think about um, that that's what they're trying to do, as long as you follow those key things um, and you keep building genuine relationships, so we always say genuine, authentic relationships, um, and you keep providing genuine new content all the time, um, and you go in and you do your bit for engaging in other people's content as well, Facebook are going to re reward you for that. So it doesn't matter how the algorithm changes or what new update they run, those are their, fun their, their values. Those are the, the fundamentals. Mm -hmm. um, now, when it comes to standing out online, I think um, when I work with, with people, the number one thing they've got to first work out is how do they want to be seen online first? Because mm -hmm. privacy is incredibly important. So if people are going to use social media platforms, they do need to identify which is the platform that they resonate with most that they feel comfortable on, that they know the best, and that their ideal clients are on as well, because they need to be able to safely use the platform so they don't get into trouble. Um, and from there, as far as standing out goes, they've got to work out how public or private do you want your profile to be, because we're yeah. all different. Some of us are extroverts. Some of us want to be doing Facebook Lives every day. Uh, some of us, you know, want to be, you know, on there, you know, three, four times a day because that's the type of personality they are. But we need to be true to ourselves and go, well, who, who am I? Who are my ideal clients? What am I comfortable with? Because whatever rhythm you get into will be the level of consistency that your ideal clients will get used to online. Mm -hmm. um, so that's, I always say, it always starts with you first. Um, yes. And then the next thing is, is, is always your business. So mm -hmm. uh, if you want to stand out in your business, you have to come up with a strategy of what are you hoping to achieve? What is your intention? What is the outcome you're hoping to achieve? And what is the action you're going to take to get to that point? Rather than just go and sit on social media with no clear directional purpose. Exactly. Uh, I, I love what you said earlier about choosing a platform and going with that. Because so often out there, you see all this marketing stuff that comes along and it's like, oh no, it's, it's happening on Pinterest. Oh no, Facebook is where you be, need to be. No, no, no. LinkedIn is what you should be doing. No, you should be doing YouTube video channel stuff. And it's like, do I have to be doing all the things? And I love the fact that you're like, no, <laughs> find out where yeah. your audience is, go do that. <laughs> yeah, 100%. Get, get really good at one thing. Uh, you know, and then from there, if you want to branch out from there, that's fine. But first, get an actual paying result from the, the energy and the effort that you're putting into the one thing that you're doing, um, which is important. You know, I, I'm now, I, out of pure necessity, I learned Facebook and I grew my business, but now I've gone on to get my diploma in social media marketing, and yet Facebook's still my, my platform of choice because I integrate all the other channels, but at the end of the day, with everything changing all the time, you can only really know one really well if you're in it all the time. You just get to go, oh, today they've run a new update. Oh, okay, they've changed where publishing tools is. Like, you know, yeah. it's like, okay. You just we'll have a little update. game of hide and seek and then we'll move on. <laughs> yeah, but when you're using it all the time, you just get familiar with that and you start to just get used to it. It's not stressful and overwhelming anymore. You just, you just roll with the punches. Um, so yeah, so just getting back to the standing out online. So when it comes to uh, a business, in order to stand out, they have to, uh, besides knowing where they want to go, what they're hoping to achieve, it's important for uh, people to do a few things. So one thing is to do a competitive analysis. So this isn't so that oh, you can go. Oh, oh, now you're killing me. <laughs> you're you're using marketing speak on me now. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, but listen, go. To, okay, I'll use my speak. Go stalk your competitors. <laughs> okay, I like that better. <laughs> You need to go and stalk, okay? And I always refer to everything as if you were going to date somebody, okay? If you were online dating and you were going to go date someone and you wanted to form a relationship with them and you wanted to be able to trust them to go out to coffee with them, um, business is exactly the same. You've got to go in and you have to stalk them. See whether or not, you know, they're either going to be great referral partners. 
I just had visions of like restraining orders. <laughs> uh, yeah. So you've got to go in and stalk them and it's not that. You've got to know, you know, are they talking to the same audience? What type of content are they putting out? What is their desirable offer? What packages are they doing? What is their pricing? Are they in the same geographical location as you? Seriously, it is one of the most underutilized things that, that's free that people could be doing to making their business better. And, and where do we find all this information on Facebook? I know they're, they're a huge repository of stuff, yes. uh, but sometimes it's not always really obvious where yeah. you can find all this. Well, Facebook is exactly a search engine just like Google. So just like you can go into Google and you can put it up in the search bar in Google and anyone who's using those words, it will, it will show you. You can go into Facebook and at the top of Facebook, there's a little search bar and you can put in um transformational coach you can put in facebook strategist and then you can have a look at any posts that have the words in it any people that are using the words any groups that i have the words so it's a it's a it's a search engine just like google so you can go in there and you can go plumber and then or have a look at plumber anyone else that's people or pages that are plumbers then down the left hand side it'll say do you want in a certain area so you can choose a certain area it's honestly the best uh, best way to stalk somebody. Um, oh, awesome. So if I'm a, a marmot breeder, I could put marmots up there and find marmot trainers and yes. marmot veterinarians and yep. love so it. I was actually, I was away in Bali when Mount Agung was about to blow uh, while we were actually there. And we were just in a little island off of it. And I went onto Facebook and I put in Mount Agung. And anybody who shared public posts about Mount Agung, the post came up. So we could actually see from people that were living at the base of Mount Agung how the mountain was and get feedback from people that were there, what was going on. The yes. irony was um, I had Australia contact me, the Australian newspaper contact me and asked me to comment on Mount Agung because of what I was posting. And I'm like, all I'm doing is going into Facebook and searching and getting the up-to-date information for people at the base of the mountain. I'm not even there. I'm on the other little island. <laughs> People don't know that it's a search engine and they could be searching um, and doing a lot of stalking. So stalking is very important um, because that way, if you want to stand out online, well, you've got to create an outstanding presence. So you've got to do something that, that no one else is doing or do it slightly better or, or have a bit of a creative edge or a niche. Okay. So thinking back to where we were deciding how we want to show up, is there a line between personal and business branding when you're, you're approaching it this way? And where does that line fall? So yeah, good, great question. Fantastic question. And like I said, that's the first thing I do when I work with somebody is establish their personal branding and their level of privacy as well. Because I work with a lot of lawyers, psychologists, uh, teachers. They've got to have sort of a, a lot more private profile. Um, so here's the thing. Um, I find that because it's a social platform, it, it has to be social. Now, if you are doing business with the actual person, the people have to develop trust with that person. So although it's a social platform and your business page is there and a lot of people just want to show their business page, you do have to show yourself inside your business page if you are the one directly working uh, with that person. So for example, I'm working with a physiotherapist at the moment. She's on her own. Her niche is uh, CrossFitters. So she's a physio for CrossFitters. Um, so on her page, all she had was her business name and all she did was post things about, you know, all her services. However, now we've started integrating uh, her into it to say, I'm a CrossFitter. I love to, uh, love to do physio on CrossFitters. For years, they've had these injuries. Now this is what I'm doing. So it helps build that trust. It helps give her credibility and people can start forming that relationship with the person. Mm. So especially with coaches, they need to be elements of them on their page. So a lot of people leave out on their Facebook page, they leave out themselves. They need to tell their story. They need to say, tell their why. Uh, they need to, um, yeah, be, be present. And you don't, and you know, some people are not comfortable doing Facebook lives. That's okay. There's a different strategy for both, pe for both types of people. Um, but you do need to still show pictures of yourself, maybe show your kids, but it helps people connect and it helps also establish your values. Uh, because people want to work with people with the same values. Um, and it also evokes curiosity. You know, um, I foster uh, rescue dogs. So when I tell my, 
my rescued, uh, foster rescue dogs, bring them back to good health, and then we find homes for them. And, you know, that's a good connection point. People might go, oh, that's great. Or, yeah. you know, so just I, helps. I love dogs. So I'm happy to connect with you on the dog level. And I got to say props to you for being a foster mom, because that's an emotionally difficult thing to do. Yes, it is. It, it is. <laughs> and so my hat's off to you. Thank you. <laughs> we, yeah, we did cry the first, the first dog that we ever rehomed. And we absolutely loved the first one that we had. And, um, and my, yeah, I actually, I was a terrible mom that day because I actually went out when they came to pick up the dog and I asked my daughters and my mother to, to hand the dog away because I couldn't. I can't do it. <laughs> so that was the first hard lesson I taught my daughters. <laughs> Here, be stronger than mom. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so with the standing out, uh, one of the things when you talk about personal branding, when you say unique selling point, so you, they always talk, you know, marketing terms, unique selling point. What is the thing that you do that someone else potentially is not doing or it's unique to you? Right. But guess what? You are your unique selling point. Like, I love that. You are. Like, without your business, without what it is that you do, if it, without you, it, you wouldn't have that business. That's so I true. think it's important to have that on your, on your profile. It is up to you, of course, how much of your personal profile on Facebook you want to use. Some people don't want to use their personal profile at all. But how I like to remind people is that on your personal profile, there are people on there that already know, like, and trust you. So if they already know, like, and trust you, and if they're your biggest cheerleaders or biggest supporters, it's important on your Facebook page to also remind them what it is that you're doing. Because sometimes yes. they just think that you're doing well. Um, or, you know, they, th they think it's great. And because you never ask, they never do anything. But we yeah. found that this has worked in the beauty industry quite well when they go onto their personal profile and go, hey, I've had a cancellation for a hair appointment tomorrow at three o'clock. If anybody would like it, uh, friends and families come along. And they filled that slot, you know, and they filled that time slot. So we, we do need to remember to remind people on our personal profiles as well that, hey, this is what we do. And yes, we are looking for clients and support. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Please, please refer. Referrals yes. are, are gratefully received. <laughs> yes. And you know, it doesn't have to be spammy. It just has to be conversational, you know, yeah. um, and people are more than happy to support you. That's, that's a beautiful thing to remind ourselves of. <laughs> yeah. So now that we've kind of sorted out like the level of privacy that we want and how we really are part of our business brand, how do we start putting the fundamentals together to make Facebook work for us and not just be this black hole of scrolling and seeing what everybody else is doing? <laughs> yeah, that's a good question. So when I started three years ago uh, with this business, um, I call myself a Facebook coach because I thought I'll just coach people how to use the platform and everybody will do well. But what I realized was that it's actually the strategy that makes all the difference. People are generally using the platform and some people are doing a really good job. Um, and I met someone in Sydney last week and he said, oh, I've got a great strategy. It works really well. And I've had a look at his page and everything at the most beautiful post every single day. He had videos, he had everything. And I said, oh, you've got a great content plan. You don't really have a good strategy because you don't have a strategy of how you're actually going to get clients from putting all that content on there. Yes. So when it comes to, um, to coming up with your content for your Facebook page, it's important that you, unique selling point is in there so that you can build trust with your audience. It's important that you show social proof. So people don't only want to see what you say about yourself and how good you are, but they want to see case studies or testimonials um, or reviews from other people. So it's important to have that on your page as well. Uh, credibility. So if you've won awards, if you're registered, if you're insured, if you've got years experience, it's important that that's on there as well on your page. So when people come to that page, within three seconds of getting to your page, they straight away know what the problem that it is that you solve. So they straight away, if they're the right person, they'll go, yes, I'm interested. And then they'll look further. Nice. So what is the strategy we need to put behind the content plan? Because I know I have I was recently told I'm a fabulous content provider, but I'm a crappy sales <laughs> lead generator. <laughs> yeah. So if we know who our ideal client is on Facebook um, and we know them intimately, so we know how to talk to them and we know what their problem is. 
if we can build trust with them through showing them ourselves and building that relationship with them online, it then is also important to let them know that you can solve their problem. Yes. So often a lot of people do too much salesy or they do too much education or they do too much humor, but they never actually say, I get you. I understand that you have this problem. Did you know that I can help you with this problem? Have a look over here. So a lot of the time it comes down to the call to action. What is the call to action? Are you actually asking people to take the next step? And it's not all the time. Sometimes it could just be asking them a question. What do you think about this? To evoke a conversation, to get the conversation going. You know, how do you feel about this? Um, so how we structure an actual post, so every single post is firstly a headline that's going to call your ideal client. So for example, I might say, are you stressed and overwhelmed with this new era of using Facebook in your business? So somebody goes, yes, that's me. Hands so, the up, headline, yes. so the headline stops the person from scrolling. And that's the, that first sentence is so incredibly important. The second sentence then is connect with their pain. Okay. You, I might say something like, um, I get it. You know, this new era of Facebook in our business, uh, we've never learned how to do it as business owners. We've now been thrust into this whirlwind of having to work out what to post when and why and how to actually get clients. So you actually connect with their pain points. So they go, oh, she gets me. She really gets me. And then from there, offer a solution to say, well, you know, we can do, uh, we can help you set up your, your page privately. We can uh, help you establish your privacy settings, get your fundamentals in place, uh, create a Facebook strategy so you can actually generate paying clients. How does that sound? Or, that sounds fabulous. Where do I sign up? <laughs> yeah, how does that sound? Or would you like to book a call? Or, uh, you know, I have this webinar that's coming up. So inviting them to do something. Um, and of course, always a good image or good video, but we want to make it easy for people. A lot of the time I work with businesses and they've got like a 10 step process of how a person can contact you or, or people go, no, I don't want them phoning me. And I'm like, people nowadays, especially if it's a high priced item, if it's anything sort of over about $100 um, and this is Australian dollars, People are going to want a conversation unless you're McDonald's. Like if, if, if you're a Big Mac and you're McDonald's, they know who you are. They know how you taste. They'll pay for it. But yeah. when it comes to, to being really a stranger online, um, they're going to want to have a conversation with you. Yeah. Or they're going to want to at least have a webinar or something with you beforehand. So it's about identifying who's your ideal client and how, how are they going to receive, um, receive our engagement and how are we going to connect and what are they going to be comfortable with doing in order to move forward? Mm, okay. And is there kind of an optimal path for that that you've seen for people or is uh, it? It really more... does depend on the business owner, what they're hoping to achieve, um, how much time they're wanting to spend on it. Again, it comes down to also how public or private they want to be because some people don't want to, uh, they don't want to go down the webinar funnel of have a webinar with people earn trust from the webinar and then from the web offer them an opportunity to work to to buy to buy their program yeah so that, there's you know, a, a fair of, amount of technology in the whole webinar funnel yes yeah yeah there is there is um there are there is a way to do it you can do it just by facebook lives on your page but again facebook lives i always tell people can actually make or break your business everybody says go and do facebook lives and everyone goes and does it but unfortunately if you don't structure it well and your content's not good if somebody watches it and it's terrible, they'll never click on it again and then the algorithm will just die. So Facebook lives themselves have to have a strategy and they have to follow that, con that post structure as well. Um, so yeah, so it works different for every person. Um, like I was working with a, a lady, a cake decorator. One of her things was somebody would message in Facebook and go, please, can you bake me a cake? Okay, now this is a lady baking cake. So she's baking the cake, she comes back to Facebook and goes, oh my gosh, uh, yes, I can. When do you need the cake bar? And the person comes back an hour or two later and goes, by Monday. She goes back and goes, uh, vanilla or chocolate? And they come back and go, oh, chocolate. Uh, she comes back and goes, any allergies? For how many people? And this is the back and forth that's going through the whole time. Yeah. And it's an absolute time waster. So, you know, for that there, we took that away and said, well, now we've went onto a landing page. So they've got to fill out an inquiry form. When do you want the cake bar? What allergies? What, what do you have? Yeah, what the flavors and yeah. Yeah, so it depends on the business owner and what the client will be happy to do. What the client will be happy to do. Um, I've worked with uh, Car Finance 
businesses, a lot of them uh, want them to fill out an inquiry form. And for car loan businesses, for car finance businesses, for some reason, people don't want to do it. They don't want to fill in that form. But they're more than happy to have a phone call just to see about their credit rating. But it's, so you've got to track and see what works and what doesn't work for each industry. Um, so yeah, there isn't, an, there isn't an ideal. It kind of is what you're hoping to achieve as well. Um, if you do go down the webinar route, I always say to people, um, never just do one piece of content. That one piece of content you can repurpose into multiple things. So if you're doing webinars, that can become a series, that can become an online program, you can then sell that as a low price offer, or you can use that as a hook to get other people. So never think that your content that you do, if you do your content properly and if you have that strategy, that could become anything. You know, three years of my work is now going into a book. Um, yes. I don't have to write the book, I have three years worth of content, which is now all gonna to go towards a book. So you have to have a plan, a plan. What are you hoping to achieve and what's the action you're gonna to take to achieve it? And it's different for everyone. So if we're looking to generate free leads off of Facebook, you already talked about kind of the structure of that stoplight sort of post. It's like, oh, oh, breaks on. This one's interesting to me. What else do we need to know if we're looking to generate leads off of Facebook? Um, you have to be consistent. You know, a lot of people go, oh, I only go into Facebook, you know, my post two or three times a week. Um, or, they, or they might say, Oh, I don't want to bother people. Like I don't want to bother or be in people's faces. What we need to understand is that it's an algorithm. So uh, it's only when people actually start engaging in your posts will they start to see your stuff. So it's only if they're actually liking, commenting, or sharing will we actually come up on their timeline. But there's many people who don't actually engage. They just sit and they watch. And they are actually often your clients. So I often get people calling me and will go, yep, I want to work with you. And I've never seen them engaging everywhere because I watch, I, I watch everything that's going on. Um, so there are people that are watching and you have to be consistent. So for me, like I post twice a day um, and I go into groups and I engage once a day. So I might spend 20 minutes a day doing that. Um, engaging meaning I'm answering their questions. If they're asking questions about Facebook, I'm showing interest in what it is. Um, like somebody commented something this morning about Facebook Live. And I went in and I gave my comment. Uh, people will start tagging me as well because she's the guest expert. Ask her, what do you think? Um, so it's important that if you are going to use the platform to generate leads, well, you've got to actually be using it. You've got to be on there. You've got to be engaging in groups. You've got to be providing your own content. Um, and don't look at it as the enemy. Look at it as an income producing thing if you do it. Um, and uh, yeah, so I, I think that. There are, there are leads there, but you've got to know how to identify them. And the other thing is, is that when you do identify that lead, you've got, to, you've got to actually follow through. So, so many people engage, but they don't follow through. So, follow through by inviting them to have a call with you, um, or would you like to private message me, or would you like to jump onto my website and have a look at my services? So, whatever people are asking for on Facebook, um, answer their questions, so give them some feedback, and then invite them to take the next step. Don't just leave it there. People go, I don't want to bother them. You're not bothering them because if they actually have a problem and if you're actually solving that problem for them, you're actually giving them the service that they want. Um, yeah. And it's up to them whether or not they follow through, but make it easy for them. Absolutely. I love that. But I have to ask you one question. Sure. What is your secret to going on Facebook and only being there 20 minutes? <laughs> how, uh, how do you make that happen? Okay, so I have, what's, I have a bubble around me. I have a bubble around me and I had to create that bubble. Like I blew that bubble up <laughs> about a year or two ago because it was insane. Like it can be addictive. And then I woke up one day and went, this is crazy. So I go on and I don't look, I have this bubble and I go on and do what I need to do. And that's it. So if I'm going on and I'm engaging in groups, if I'm following up on leads, like that is my allocated time, I go on and I do it. So as business owners, um, if we worked for somebody, and our job, they said to us, oh, we want you to go onto Facebook and you only allocated 20 minutes. You set the timer and in 20 minutes, you've got to do everything that you need to do. Well, guess what? Uh, if your boss said, I'm going to fire you if you don't do that, then you would do it. But as entrepreneurs, we get on there and we get shiny light syndrome and we start looking everywhere and we start fluffing around. And our boss is kind of easy on us. So. <laughs> and our boss 
goes, it's okay, we'll do it later. <laughs> so I had to, I, I must be honest, I had to get into that mindset um, a while back. Um, in saying that, I go on three times, 20 minutes a day, three times a day. But the business, but I've got multiple businesses, so uh, that's how I do it. I've got, and I only go on and work on one business at a time because uh, I find that when you've got two businesses and they're two different audiences, it, it's very difficult to have the right compelling content. It becomes fluffy and fluff doesn't work on social media. Mm. So I might go, you know, the morning is this business. That's who I'm talking to. That's my strategy. This is what I'm doing that time of the day. That's my strategy. I love that. Um, talk to me a minute about like schedulers and this sort of thing. Are oh. they are those useful or do they kind of put you out of step with what the conversation people are having is? What's your experience with that? Sure. Oh. Look, I have a lot of um, business owners that tend to want to go down that route. Um, and I, I always give the pros and cons to everything. Uh, using the outside calendars, the Facebook doesn't like, Facebook wants to keep everything inside Facebook. I mean, that's why they have their own publishing tool. So if you are going to use a publishing tool in Facebook, rather use their one. Because as soon as you start clicking out and in, Facebook slows the algorithm down. So whatever mm. they create for us, we really should be using. Uh, the only thing I, I disagree on using is the appointment feature, but I'll talk to you about that one later. Um, so with the publishing school, so if you're going to use these other mass publishing tools, so here's the thing. Most people aren't creative. Most people are struggling to write one post. So when I used to say to business owners, oh, okay, you know, sit down on a Monday morning and plan for the whole week. Here's your topic. Here's the outline of what you're hoping to achieve. And they are, they just sit there and look at this and go, oh my gosh, because I'm they weren't so overwhelmed. Yeah. <laughs> overwhelmed. Um, I've now got to come up with, you know, if I'm posting once a day, that's seven images, seven pieces of content, seven pieces of whatever, and they sit there and it's too hard. So I actually say that I find it even for myself, it comes better for me when I'm in my inspiration, when I'm in my flow. So when I'm working with you and I'm excited and I, I get a result, I go, that's great content. Because if that's working right now, and if I just help that client with that, if I go into Facebook and I post how I've just solved that person's problem, well, that's giving me credibility. So, and it's real life. It's, case, it's a case study. So I find that in my day, if you treat it like a diary, and if you know what you really need to be putting on Facebook to get a result, which is social proof, credibility, success stories, a little bit of you, um, then all you've got to do is every day go, that was good. I'm going to use that today. That was good. I'm going to use that today. So from content schedulers, it does slow the algorithm down. If you are going to use it, use the publishing tool within Facebook. Uh, and yeah, I, I, as I said, I prefer to come from a place of inspiration. Um, yeah. And I find most of the business owners I work with, when I kind of show them that in a pretty picture, they go, oh yeah, I'm just going to do it. But then when I show them, I go, hold on, just find one thing a day that you can just take a quick picture after your appointment, after your client, just sit in the car and just quickly put it up with that post structure that we spoke about earlier. Um, it's going to have more feelings because if you were doing seven in a day, by the time you get to the seventh post, it's like, I'm really? an accountant. I do tax returns. Please yeah. book me. <laughs> really, really mechanical. Um, yeah. Speaking of the algorithm, since you brought yeah. that up, how do we outsmart the algorithm if up to this point we've kind of been lurking and when we put stump something out, mostly it's crickets? How, do, how sure. do we start getting the eyes and gaining the traction? So we spoke about stalking earlier and basically Facebook is the biggest stalker ever. Okay. Facebook cannot be Facebook without the algorithm. So what the algorithm is, the algorithm is a prediction of what you're into. Okay. So Facebook is stalking you and is, is stalking everyone else on Facebook by the words that you put into the platform. So how you set up your personal profile, how you set up your business page, the words that you put in there and the content and how you engage and what you like, Facebook goes, I know you. This is what you like. This is what you're into. Then it looks at what other people are into and what they like, and it matches you. It's like a dating site. And it goes, right, I'm going to show you each other's stuff because you both seem to be into dogs. Okay? So if you keep talking about dogs, you keep, we'll, we'll put you guys together. Um, and it starts to show each other's content. So that's how the algorithm is. So if you know your ideal client and if you know what they are struggling with and you go onto Facebook, and firstly, you set up your profile so that it uses those words. So it's telling the algorithm that that's what you do. 
Mm -hmm. Secondly, you go on and you engage in that kind of content yourself. So you go like and you comment and you share um, all that content. Facebook will go, okay, she's into that. Um, and then you provide content regarding that as well. Facebook will just match it. There is really, like, that is the easiest way to outsmart it. So I love the algorithm. Every morning when I, like, wake up, the post that I saw earlier about somebody asking about Facebook lives, um, I got that notification because I'm constantly posting about Facebook and I'm constantly engaging in posts about Facebook. So all of that will come, will come to me. That's beautiful. So, I love that. Yeah. This gives me hope. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it is. Um, so a I, great example is um, like over Christmas last year, I was looking for a spare fridge, a second hand spare fridge. And I went on and said second hand spare fridge. And guess what? For the next like two months, fridges were coming up everywhere. Yeah. <laughs> fridges are coming up all around me. Yeah, 100%. <laughs> I love that. Love that. Yeah. So I know in the marketing world, they talk about funnels and you need to have a funnel for this and a funnel for that. Is it possible to have a funnel on Facebook and what does that look like? Yeah, hundred percent. Look, a funnel is just, you know, it's just another F word. Um, and a lot of people <laughs> get mad by the F word. Um, but the reality is, is all it is, is a customer journey. Okay. So if you think about the customer journey, who is the customer? What do they want? How am I going to talk to them? Cause that's your content. Uh, how am I going to talk to them now? Once they know, like, and trust me, what is the next step? What is the problem that I'm going to solve for them then? So where am I going to take them? What is that solution? What am I going to offer them? Once they have that offer, what am I going to offer them next? Where am I going to take them? So it's just that customer journey. So it's, it's all about, you know, generating the leads. So um, how I'm going to generate or evoke enough curiosity and then where am I going to take them to eventually get them off Facebook because you want them off Facebook. The longer you keep them on Facebook, the more cold they get. So oh. a lot of people will sit and they will talk backwards and forwards on Facebook. They, people will actually just stop talking. Mm. And um, it's actually very important to straight away go, hey, let's chat. Let's just get on the phone and let's chat. Or if you've got a landing page or inquiry form, hey, could you fill this out? Um, and then I can book an appointment and we'll have a chat. So get them off Facebook as soon as possible. Okay, excellent. That's one thing I've been doing right. Yay, for, yay yeah. me. <laughs> <laughs> so as you're moving people along this know, like, trust, and eventually work with you, how, how do you get them to a yes as you're working with them on Facebook? And presumably moving them off as, as quickly as possible. <laughs> Yeah. Um, look, I think you have to be consistent and you have to, as I said, tick all those boxes. So you've got to be showing your test. You've got to be showing social proof, what other people are saying about you. You have to show success, success stories. You have to show your credibility. You have to show a little bit about yourself. Every time you do that, a person goes, yes, yes, yes. Like I'm pretty energized. I'm pretty motivating. I'm pretty, you know, and that's not going to work for everyone. And that's okay. Um, there is another Facebook person here. Um, in, in Queensland and, you know, and I would imagine she would get the quieter sort of more timid people who can't possibly take coaching from someone who's a little bit more, you know, enthusiastic and that's, that's okay. So having a little sense of yourself on your page, people are going to go straight away. Oh, that's the person I want to work with. Um, and then they're going to start engaging or as I said, some people don't engage. They just straight away contact you, which is really good. So we just need to make it easy for people to do that. I love that. Now, I know you brought a gift with you for all of the people who've joined us here today. I'd love it if you would share what your gift is about. Excellent. Thank you. So, yeah, well, like, I mean, this gift is pretty, um, it's pretty uh, important to me. It's pretty special to me because, you know, when I started my business 11 years ago, I had three small kids, uh, no marketing budget, no startup capital. And I really didn't know what to do to get my business off the ground. And in fact, my husband had been made redundant twice over three years, which was really challenging for us. Oh, so God. Um, I taught myself Facebook. I started to play on Facebook and then taught myself Facebook um, to basically save my business. So this particular program now is a program that has been developed for business owners who have no marketing budget. They've got no startup capital. They've got no idea. Like they keep looking at this Facebook things. They keep doing stuff and they keep seeing other people getting results, but they just don't seem to be able to crack it themselves. Um, and they may not be in a position to work one-on-one -on -one with me. So we put together this program, which is a video of me. Uh, it's a video showing you what to do 
It's a workbook of taking you through some really simple processes, which is so beneficial for you as a business owner. And then from there, it gives them a task for them to implement on their own Facebook as well. Um, and it's 16 modules in total. It's my do-it-yourself Facebook marketing program. It goes through lives, it goes through groups, it goes through finding out your niche and what your desirable offer is, um, your personal branding, business branding. So very, very um, excited about this new program. And as a gift to your tribe today, if they are interested in taking that up, I'm gonna throw in eight weeks of classroom training where they get um, group training with me. Uh, nice. Uh, in, a, in a classroom on Facebook where we actually go through everybody's profiles and we all discuss, we see what other people are doing, we get feedback, um, which is great. You feel like you're being supported, which is really good. Um, and on top of it, my do-it-yourself Facebook ads program, which is um, absolutely wild. There's an extra 10 modules as well. And that one's worth $500. So really excited to gift that to your community. Wow. Um, that sounds like everything you need to really get going on Facebook. <laughs> yes, 100%. So very excited. I love that. I love that a lot. If you resonate with this offer at all, you're the least bit curious about it. Click on the button that's below this video if you're watching this on the browser. If you've upgraded to VIP and you've got the podcast version of this, thank you so much for your upgrade. And you can go to 2020 resolutionskeptsummit.com slash Chantal Gift. That's C-H-A-N-T-A-L-G-I-F-T. And you can get access to this offer. There's a coupon code you will need. And the coupon code is BHAG for Big, Hairy, Audacious Goal. BHAG. And that's all lowercase. And you will get in on this amazingly generous gift that Chantel has brought today. Thank you so much. Do you have any last words of wisdom for us before we leave today? Yes, I'd firstly like to thank you so much and for what you're doing for your community. I think it's amazing to have such inspirational people like yourself around and people are lucky to have you, which is awesome. Um, and my, my words of wisdom today would be just invest in yourself. Um, above everything else, invest in yourself and invest in your ability to, to uh, be the best person that you can be and be the best business owner that you can be. Um, and, you know, I did that 11 years ago for myself and, and it seriously transformed my business when I stopped looking outwards and I start looking inwards um, and focusing on building that. So thank you so much for having me today. I love that. Thank you so much for coming and so generously sharing of your time and knowledge today. I really appreciate that. Without knowledgeable, wonderful people like you, this summit would be going nowhere. So I, I really appreciate the gift that you've brought to us in this conversation, as well as the actual gift you brought today as well. And I just want to talk to you out there listening to this interview. And I just want to tell you, we love you, we care about you, and we care about your business, your mission, and getting your big work out into the world. However you describe that, I know some of you are like, yeah, I'm totally an entrepreneur. And other people are like, well, uh, they don't, have jobs with titles of what I do. So therefore I am an entrepreneur <laughs> and you don't feel quite as much like you own that, but it doesn't matter whether you own it or don't own it. We're on the same journey and it's so important that your work gets out into the world. There are people who are struggling with problems that you've overcome and they need your wisdom. They need your guidance. They need your inspiration and your encouragement. And we are here to help you make that happen. Because as much as you feel like you're alone on an entrepreneurial journey, the truth is you need a team to get there. And I'm honored that you've chosen to join us and honored to be part of your team. So stay tuned. There's more good stuff coming in the summit to help you with that. And I am so looking forward to interacting with you in the community and answering emails and all of that good stuff. Facebook comments. <laughs> we're, we're engaging all the ways. As much as I should be focusing, we're engaging all the ways. So we will meet you where you're at and stay tuned for the next stuff. Until then, live soul first.